how do we ensure that we get results for the clients? Well, for goodness sake, set yourself up for success. How do you do this? You want to choose clients who align with those for whom you've gotten results before. So client selection is 90% of this battle, right? If you're working with the wrong clients, you can pretty much guarantee that you're not going to get success, right? Hey, it's Samantha Hartley of the Profitable Joyful Consulting Podcast. This season, we are talking about money. And today, I wanted to talk about a question that I get often, which is, should I, as a consultant, guarantee my results? Do you need to offer a guarantee in order to be like legitimate in your business? So I'm going to talk about the pros and the cons of offering guarantees, what kind of guarantees there are, and then um, many other things that you should consider before you just jump in and randomly offer guarantees. Cool? So first, uh, what I want to talk about is the pros and cons. Uh, one of the bit really big pros of offering a guarantee in your business is it is bold. I have a number of clients that I work with who guarantee the results, guarantee the outcomes of their work. Uh, and when you do that, well, it's an attention getter. You know, it is a really big um, statement of confidence in what you're doing. And believe me, clients like perk up their ears when they they hear that you guarantee the results that you get. And as a result, it's a differentiator. That's the second pro of this. If you can differentiate differentiate yourself from the others in your field who are doing this kind of work, then it's really, you know, it's great. Is there a financial outcome that you're able to guarantee? Is there a, you know, a skills outcome? Whatever that is, if you can guarantee it, then you're differentiating yourself again with that confidence. When you guarantee your results, a lot of times it creates trust for the client and that makes it easier for you to close their business. Another a third pro of offering a guarantee is that the sale may it usually goes more smoothly because clients are like, wow, well, I guess it's not a, a risky decision for us. It's an easier yes. You make it easier for the clients to say yes. So those are three really good reasons to offer a guarantee. Um, now here's some kind of cons, like reasons why you might not want to. Uh, obviously there's a financial risk to you. If you put a bunch of time and effort into the work with a client and then you're guaranteed the results and you for some reason don't get them, then you risk, right? You risk money, you risk uh, your reputation, you risk uh, just looking terrible. Uh, anytime we don't get results, it is terrible. But especially if you've promised up front, then you set an expectation that a certain thing would happen. And uh, then, you know, if you fall on your face in that kind of situation, then it's actually worse than... Uh, it would be if you had not emphasized so much that you were going to be so bold about guaranteeing your results. You never want to guarantee something and then have to uh, make good on that guarantee with whatever consequences come up. So that is a big thing to keep in mind. The reason I am generally opposed to something like a money back guarantee in consulting is you shift responsibility from yourself, well, from the client to yourself. So if you're guaranteeing the results, it's saying, well, you've got, uh, you know, sway and influence and maybe even control over what happens in the work. And if so, well, then the client kind of is like, well, we know I don't really have to do anything. Sometimes that's the case. But very often we have shared responsibility with the client. And I don't like for us to do anything that makes it feel for the client like they are like, oh, I don't have to do anything. And um, then they divest or aren't as committed or anything like that. To me, that puts you in a precarious position. Now, an example of a, uh, somebody I know is a colleague of mine who I, I reference frequently because I loved uh, his business and he himself is quite funny. And his business, he did guarantee results in his business. So his thing was, he was kind of a hatchet man. He would go into uh, organizations, big organizations. They would hire him to cut $10 million in expenses. In exchange for that, they would pay him $1 million. And he would work with them for as long as that took, usually about a year. So I think all of these uh uh, un unnecessary things were cut. I think probably a lot of people lost their jobs from him cutting, but whatever it was, he could say, you know, I'm going to come in, I'm going to do this thing and I guarantee the result. When I asked him about this guarantee, he said, well, basically I have to guarantee the result because if I don't get the results, they won't pay me. And if I say anything about that, like if I want to sue them, well, that's too bad because they are big organizations and they have teams and teams of attorneys and I have just one me. So it was sensible for him in his case, because he kind of had to guarantee the results to go ahead and do that and to make that a part of his work. 
That is a unique situation that he's in where he's guaranteeing a financial result. It's easy to, to see when it happens. And there is kind of like a known thing of like uh, he doesn't have much control over whether they're going to pay him, but he does have uh, control over that he's going to um, get these results. You can also see that in a situation like that, the client kind of doesn't want to have control. Like they kind of want to, or or seem like they do, they want to kind of step back away from responsibility when you're cutting a lot of jobs or cutting a lot of people's budgets and things like that. The company wants to be able to say, well, that guy came in and did it. It wasn't necessarily us. So you want in your work, and I think we all want as consultants to share more responsibility and commitment with our clients than that kind of a situation uh, lends itself to. So if we zoom back out and we look at the big picture of why we ever would want to guarantee anything, what's, what's really the dynamic here? The dynamic of a guarantee and a guaranteed results or of any kind, whether it's return on investment or that a certain thing is going to happen, the thing we really are, are doing is where uh, it's classically called like a risk reversal. Like you want to reverse the risk that the client takes on and put more of the risk on yourself. And so I would say rather than reversing it, what we want to do is share the the risk together. Like if I've I've said to clients many times, listen, I can't work with anybody who isn't going to get results. And the reason why is because at the end of this, I want to be able to point to a case study of somebody who succeeded. Um, and if we spend X amount of time working together and we don't get that, then sure, I'll have been paid for the work, but I don't get to point to a success. So I'll ask them, can you make a promise and a commitment from your side that you will strive to succeed in the work so that you and I both win? I can't tell you how many clients that I've closed, big engagements that I've closed, saying that to them, saying, will you share the responsibility with me and will you commit to getting results? So to me, that's a much more reasonable way to work than a guarantee. But but in general, guarantees can look a few ways. So first of all, we can have a money back guarantee. And if you're in a certain kind of business, you might choose to do a money back guarantee. The second kind is I mentioned uh, this a bit is a satisfaction guarantee. You will be satisfied. And I tend to use the word promise in my uh agreements because I, I like the language around that. I like the the way that it feels. I think it's more feminine than kind of a guarantee. Um, it's more feminine and it means like I'm putting my heart and soul into this work and I intend to get results for you. I even say things like that in my agreements. And I want the client also to promise. I want them also to feel like we're um, putting our heart into this as a, as a person from one human to another, I am making this promise. So I tend to steer away from legalese in my business and in my agreements because I want that kind of human connection. And I understand if you're working with a really large enterprise, two things can happen. First of all, is you probably want to have some legal agreements with them. And the other thing is it's probably going to be their MSA or um, whatever, business agreement you're signing. It's probably going to be theirs that they have given to you to sign. And so because we can attach our pages of the agreement that we sign between each other, in addition to that legal document, I like to keep the language in the thing that I control, you know, my my agreement that I sign with the client, and then I'm going to sign a legal contract. Uh, I like to keep our uh, language more kind of human and use words like promise. Uh, so that was a long way to say I, uh, I want you to consider guaranteeing satisfaction more than money back, right? Money back guarantees are really reasonable for a certain kind of industry. So again, if we look at what's happening nowadays, what's the dynamic in which you're being asked to guarantee results or whatever? A lot of times people are comparing us to something they might buy on the internet, especially if you're working remotely with clients. They're like, well, I'm doing business on the internet and so I can't, it's not necessarily face-to-face. -face. I don't necessarily see you. It's kind of like buying an information product. So let's talk about when we buy an information product, what happens versus when someone invests in your services. Well, if I spend a lot of money for an information product, like $1,000 for a course, that's just like a self-study course, it's one thing for it to be like five bucks on Udemy, but 
if I spend a thousand bucks for this thing, well, what do I need to see? I need to see like exactly what I'm going to get. There's probably going to be like a bunch of bonuses. So it's like really, really super worth it. And then there's like all these um, guarantees. You can return it within this amount of time. And then here's all this proof, like these testimonials and these video testimonials. And then there's this little counter on the bottom left of the screen. that says like Susie from New Jersey bought this five minutes ago, that kind of thing. The standard for people to make an investment of some kind gets higher and higher and higher in this kind of a world. Okay. So over here, back on planet earth, where we consultants are doing businesses with organizations and sometimes with small organizations of one or, you know, to 10 persons, um, I was trying to bring that human factor back. And so sometimes I've had in, it, it, even with in-person clients, I've had them say, well, like, well, this is a lot of money to invest. Like what if something happens? In general, what if we don't get results? And a lot of times I feel like they're asking that because they feel like they should. And I'll be like, well, you know where I live, right? Like uh, our parents know each other or like we live in the same town or something like that. That's Again, when I was doing business with people in person, I could say that because it was true. I'd be like, um, you can come to my house and knock on the door and be like, why'd you run off from our engagement? <laughs> we weren't done. So like, okay, so that's the extreme, right? Somewhere in between this zero trust and this huge trust of like, I know where you live and I knew your parents is like, that's a spectrum. And what we're trying to do with a satisfaction guarantee or any other kind of a guarantee or a promise to get you results, a commitment to get your results, what we're trying to do is make it okay to, to reverse the risk or at least mitigate the risk so that people can trust saying yes to you. That's the dynamic that I want you to think about as you do this. So I love to say things like, um, at the end of this, I, you know, I commit to getting you this result. And at the end of this, you're going to be satisfied that you X, Y, Z. So to me, the, the guarantee language that I use in my agreements is very often at the end of this, you will have X, Y, Z. You will feel satisfied that you dot, dot, dot are able to X, Y, Z whatever is that result that we're guaranteeing for them. Okay. So I love that kind of language as a satisfaction guarantee or what, or else what, or else money back. I don't think so. Uh, if it's an information product, sure. They should give you a thousand dollars back. It didn't work. Um, in services, listen, if you completely whiffed, you should figure out how to make right, make that right with them. You know, uh, whether it's giving their money back or or something, you should figure out how to do this. But in general, what I do is I say we'll work to you until with you until we get that result. So if it's if it's um, you know we said we'd be done in ninety days and it's a hundred days, uh, we're going to work with you rapidly in order to get that result. And make sure this is built into your agreements so that you know you know you know and have considered all of the what ifs because you don't want to be in a bad position and you don't want to put the other person in a bad position, which again is good faith. And to me, satisfaction guarantees are about good faith and money back guarantees are about like in case a horrible thing happens. And that's why I feel like it's uh, it's an energy that I don't want to introduce into our working relationships. The idea that everything could go to completely to hell in a handbasket. OK, so the, the, that's the language. And those are the, the ways that I like to um, to use those guarantees. I want to talk about two more things before we're done. The first one is. What are we agreeing to? What's the thing that's being guaranteed? So this is so much about expectations. And expectations are hard because in services, uh, you may need to make sure that everybody is going to agree at the end of this thing that the outcome or the results are what we said we would get. So if they say we didn't get the results, you need to say um, we did. And here I can prove that we got that. Okay. So... That's about expectations. And that's about de clearly defining what the outcomes are. This can be easier if you have a financial outcome or a, a, an otherwise tangible measurable outcome. Like, you know, we said that your Indeed scores would increase by this much, or we said that your retention would decrease by this much, or we said that uh, revenue or savings would change by this amount. That is uh, something that all of us can point to for the most part. There's always gray areas and uh, agree on those desired outcomes. If it's more soft skills, 
the language I love to use is you uh, will be able to, leaders will be able to demonstrate X, Y, Z. People on uh, these teams will uh, be able to, like whatever they will be able to be, do, or have that they didn't before. And I define that in advance. And then as it's happening, as milestones, by the way, are happening, it doesn't, we don't have to wait until the ending and have this like glorious finale. You can note these things happening along the way. Wow, look, everybody has been able to to um, excel in the area of um, providing feedback. Or I noticed that your meeting times are now coming in at an average of 48 minutes instead of, um, you know, 62 minutes. So everybody's, you know, that metric is improving. So those are ways to, uh, to go about that. When I worked at uh, at the Coca-Cola company in the field, one of the things that we did with our um, merchandisers who were doing displays is there was literally a picture of success. And that means there was a photograph of what a cooler should look like once the product is arranged in it. Or if we were going to build this huge pyramid out of um, product, it would be that there was a a picture of what that pyramid would look like so that the merchandiser could come to his boss Um, And believe me, this went way up the chain. I did a a field visits with my boss in Asia. I remember sitting on a train going from Hong Kong into Guangzhou, China to do market visits, talking about the picture of success and like what we were going to see and that we're going to take photographs of the coolers once we got there. Why? Because that is a definable example of an outcome, a result that was gotten. So the ideal version of this is that you could take a picture of something so that you could say, here is what we promised and here is what actually happened. The closest thing that you can do to that is what you want to do. So a detailed description and then a detailed description or these five numbers changed and then these five numbers and how they changed. Okay. So think about that when you're, before you do a guarantee, be dang sure that when it comes time to review the results, you'll be looking, you'll be comparing apples to apples. The last thing that I want to talk about is to set yourself up for success. I talked about this before in an episode about client results. How do we ensure that we get results for the clients? Well, for goodness sake, set yourself up for success. How do you do this? You want to choose clients who align with those for whom you've gotten results before. So client selection is 90% of this battle, right? If you're working with the wrong clients, you can pretty much guarantee that you're not going to get success, right? So you need to have the right fit clients who are uh, their qualities, attributes. um, They're motivated to get the results. I talk very often about my clients are A plus students. When clients come to me, they want to get the results. And when they find out that, uh, the way to get an A is to hit your numbers and the way to get an A plus is to exceed your numbers. Like that's the whole game of business, isn't it really? My clients aren't mo- motivated by the money. They're motivated by the achievement. And so we equate achievement with, you know, like an A, getting an A. And that makes it more fun for everyone. And um, my clients love to do their homework. You know, it just, it's a whole profile. So figure out for for you what makes a client perfect and who tends to get success with you. Uh when I was back at corporate, there was a, a bonus system and the, the boss said, well, there's a, this X amount of money in this pool and there's five of you. So I can either split it or I can give it to one person. So, you know, that's how it's going to go based on your performance. And I was like, too bad everyone else, because I'm going to get that bonus. And I did. That's what um, a committed, serious student does. And that's what your best clients are going to be. They're going to be those who are, come in committed to get the results with you. So The first way you set yourself up for success is by selecting the right clients. The second way is by setting expectations. We do this with joint accountabilities. This is why I don't love the idea of guarantees because I want you to share responsibility with the clients. It's actually good for them to share the responsibility because then they work differently. They work from a different place. Uh, That commitment is, it's really inside of them. In the same way I was talking about that promise, It's really them saying, I want to get this result. So uh, you set the expectations about I'm going to do this and you're going to do that. And working together, we're going to be able to achieve this and be specific about what those things are, about what those responsibilities are. So if you imagine you've got a client who is the right fit, they're the same uh, profile as those who've gotten great results from you in the past. You have 
sh- joint accountabilities. You've agreed about what each of you individually needs to do. And then do work that is in your join genius zone. You know that you can get results doing this well. You set yourself up for success by focusing on way, uh, work that you know that you rock at. And when you do that, like, look at that. Like, then you can guarantee results, right? So uh, we've talked a lot about a lot of things today. We've talked about pros and cons. We've talked about the kind of guarantees. And we have talked about, uh, you know, different ways to, uh, and, and kinds of language to use to make sure that you are setting the tone, the right tone for your client engagements. I'd love to hear what stood out to you and what you're doing in your own business. You can find me on any of the socials. And if you would like to, uh, get better results in your own business, get better results for your clients and double your business without exhaustion, then feel free to reach out to me. You can find me on the socials or at samanthahartley.com. And with that, I am wishing you a profitable and joyful consulting business. 